Make America Great Again means to go back to the time where white men were supreme and women were not. Democrats are systematically destroying America. They even stole the election in 2020. 91% said the right to vote was important. 90% agreed that freedom of speech was important. I learned a long time ago, you don't have to love everything about somebody to love and respect that person. You just don't. And uninformed, misogynistic, communist, and hate. These are just five of the many choice words my next two guests use to describe Republicans and Democrats. They are two Texans, one who currently holds a Democratic office and another running a Republican campaign. Make America Great Again means to go back to the time where white men were supreme and women we're not. Democrats are systematically destroying America. They even stole the election in 2020. Republicans are angry because they believe immigrants are taking their jobs. And if immigrants can actually take their jobs, then they're actually lazy. Our Democrat adversaries are nothing but proliferating the Marxist agenda here in America. Republicans look at women as second-class citizens. They want women to be no more than farm animals. Democrats are firmly in belief of an open border policy that has brought more than 10 million invaders. Republicans are morons. They are following a leader who is an adulterer and is now selling Bibles to them for $60. If Democrats have their way, they will destroy America and our way of life. Republicans cannot run this country. Well, joining us now are Andy Hopper, who is a Republican candidate for Texas House District 64, as well as Delia Parker Mims, who is the Denton County Democratic Chair here in Texas. Welcome to both of you. Thank you. You two have been listening to everything that we've been talking about so far. I'll give you the floor first. Anything you'd like to add before I even ask a question? Well, first of all, let me just say that I am tough enough to be sitting here with these conservatives <laughs> and not be intimidated. It does not bother me that we are skewing this in that direction. Let's, let's go. Well, we're going. Uh, great. We're, we're going. What would you like to say? Well, a couple of things. So the First Amendment no longer exists for women because we don't have a right to privacy. We're no more than farm animals. We can't make decisions for our own health care. And then we mentioned about universities. Of course, universities are um, areas that are typically liberal. Um, in my town, there, I, I will say this. The elections are stolen. You're right. Because in the state of Texas... Greg Abbott has redistricted all of the counties so that we really aren't going to win any elections. So when you have a street that's got 100 Democrats and you break it up into four different voting districts, that means Democratic power will not, um, you will not be able to exercise your power. So if Mr. Hopper were to come out of this um, primary, a winner, he's basically pretty much guaranteed to win because the elections are in fact stolen. And the only way we can get beyond that is to start voting in the primary. So I, I encourage Republicans who are not maggots to vote in their primary. Maggots? So that we can have more pe people to choose from who are not extreme. What's a maggot? Okay. What, what you... Oh, I mean maggots. Oh, okay. Okay. How you doing? <laughs> Good. I'm doing great. So one of the things I would say is reviewing the Democratic Party platform and the Republican Party of Texas platform, there are substantial differences, right? There, there, are. there, are, there are significant ideological differences. Mm -hmm. And I think we really need to start there. And that's where I talk to people about, and I try to in, you know, incorporate the idea that the Republican Party platform mentions the word God 19 times. Mm -hmm. It begins with the idea that rights originate with God and it is the duty of government to defend our rights. The Democratic Party platform objectively starts off with the idea that it's the job of the government to keep us safe. That it's that the word God is not mentioned at all in the Democratic mm -hmm. Party platform. The word safe or safety is mentioned 64 times. And the word healthcare is mentioned 55 times. So the idea that the platform of the Democratic Party should be to provide free things for people, 
rather than to retain the rights of men is a profound difference. And I think that's where we really need to start when we talk about where we, where we end up. Yeah, I would disagree that it's to provide free things for people. That's a narrative that you guys have created. But I, I mean, you can say that the platform, um, your platform mentions God multiple times. I mean, when you mention inalienable rights and you're yep. at the very, I think the third page of the platform, it talks about here are inalienable rights, right to healthcare, right to public education, right to privacy, mm -hmm. not right to bear arms, not right to free speech, not right to assemble, not right for the state sovereignty. Yeah. The word state sovereignty is mentioned in the Republican platform 19 times. It's right. never mentioned in the Democrat platform. And the reason why I think mentioning healthcare is important because unlike you gentlemen here as a woman, I don't have the rights to healthcare that you do. I don't yeah. bear that privilege. So but you're exactly right. But thankfully, the difference is the, part, the Democratic Party is working toward the individual. But in terms I really am probably the least political person you would ever want to meet. I don't consider myself a Democrat or a Republican. I think there's the left and the right and then I think there are facts, and that's what I tend to focus on. And I've spent a lot of time in my career from a psychological perspective, and I've done a lot of training with negotiations and that sort of thing with law enforcement and lawyers and all types of groups. And the first thing I always do when I have multiple sides to an issue is to say, before we talk about our differences, Let's talk about what we can agree on. Because if you do that, people find that many times they have more in common or more that they agree on than they might have thought going into it. And actually, when you talk to Americans just coast to coast, border to border, you do find that they have a lot more that they have in common than they would have thought. For example, in a national poll, in asking what they found extremely important, 91% said the right of everyone to equal protection under the law was important. 91% said the right to vote was important. 90% agreed that freedom of speech was important. 88% right to privacy. 84% freedom of religion. So it was interesting, you're talking some really key things that people could agree on. And you know, I think back to 9-12-2001, not 9-11, mm -hmm. 9-12, because on September 12th, 2001, we were all Americans. <laughs> there weren't Democrats and Republicans, we were all Americans. And the president was everybody's president that day, regardless of who voted for him or didn't vote for him, because our country was under attack. And I hope and pray that it doesn't take that for us to become all Americans again. And there are distinct differences on some issues between the two parties. And I would think that intelligent people if they were trying to solve a problem instead of just win an argument, could come together and come up with something that both sides could live with on some of these key issues and key arguments. I'll bet I could put the two of you in a Ford Pinto in San Diego and have you drive to Bangor, Maine, just the two of you, and by the time you got there, you would have figured something out on a lot of stuff. Or, Let's do it. Like, or, just, we like? <laughs> or just one of you would show up. <laughs> uh, I'd put my money on you. I'd put my money on you. <laughs> I, mean, I would as well. We have an awful lot of people that seem to think they can read the other side's mind. And one of the things that we have talked about, the danger of stereotyping, where you take one person in a group whether it's an ethnic group or a political group or whatever, and you generalize from that one person to the whole group. So you stereotype the whole group. Research tells us that pretty much what you hear in terms of generalities 
Democrats talking about Republicans, Republicans talking about Democrats are just simply not supported by the facts. Statements that you guys have all made, the guests have made here today, when you fact check it, it's just simply not true. But we suffer from something called confirmation bias. And that is you start believing something and then you only look for information that supports what you already believe. And here's what most people don't know. And that is if you take factual, empirical, unimpeachable information that contradicts what someone holds as a belief and give it to them, it deepens their belief. It doesn't cause them to say, oh, well, hmm, okay, you got me. Um, I'll move my position. That's not the effect. It causes them to dig their heels in and say, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to believe this even deeper because it creates dissonance. I can't be wrong here. And that's just a psychological reality. The only way to overcome that is if you're aware of it. And the only way we ever grow is to prove ourselves wrong, to have some belief, test it, and broaden our lane where we say, oh, I've learned something else. Well, it's been said that a lie travels six times faster than the truth. You've heard that, right? MIT actually did a study about that and found out it's actually true. And you know why? Because a lie is simple and the truth is very complex. So a lie is neat, buttoned up, easy to repeat, and simple. So it zips around really fast. The truth is stickier. It's harder to repeat. It's harder to get right. And as I say, we have more in common than we do differences among us all. And if we'll just say, hey, I'm not right all the time. I got to be willing to listen. There are smart people on both sides of the aisle. There are things to learn from each other if we just will. Doesn't mean you have to agree with everything they say. And you know what? I learned a long time ago, you don't have to love everything about somebody to love and respect that person. You just don't. And you know, we've got to stop being right fighters and, and try to start getting along. We're in the greatest country in the world and it's ours to lose. So enough mind reading, uh, enough assuming that we know what the other person is thinking and enough living in an echo chamber. We, we have to start trying to learn something other than what we think we know. We don't want to mess this up, guys. We got the greatest country in the world. We need to start trying to find some common ground. We talk about being so divided. It's on us to close those gaps. That's what I'm all about.